Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News First at 4 starts now. Good afternoon, I'm Karen Drew. First at 4, Detroit Lions wide receiver Jamison Williams could be facing some legal trouble after a traffic stop that's become the subject of a Detroit police internal investigation. Investigators are trying to find out into if Williams should have been arrested during that traffic stop where officers found two guns inside the car. Will Jones joins us live and will you talk to the Wayne County prosecutor about the incident? What's the latest? Karen, the Wayne County Prosecutor's Office is reviewing a warrant request involving Jamison Williams. We also spoke with Chief White, who says he does not believe that Williams received special treatment. Of, but of course, that is under investigation. This all stems from a traffic stop on October 8th. According to Williams' attorney, two pistols were found in a vehicle driven by someone else with Williams in the passenger seat. The attorney said the pistols were properly registered and the driver of the vehicle had the proper credentials to carry them. Williams was not arrested or issued a citation by DPD, but now DPD has submitted a warrant request. Here's what Wayne County Prosecutor Kim Worthy had to say about this case. We, we just received that warrant request, and so we have to look at it and treat that as we do any other case as far as looking at it and see what we, if we can charge, and if we can charge, what we will charge. We just don't know at this point. The Lions are aware about what's happening. As for Williams, he is currently serving a two-game suspension for violating the league's performance-enhancing drug use policy. We're live at Fort Field. Will Jones, Local 4. All right, we appreciate it. Thank you, Will. Well, police over in Oakland County sending out a warning this afternoon about thieves taking off with iPhone packages just left on people's porches. Police say they caught a guy dressed in a FedEx hat and jacket stealing a Mac Pro off the porch of a Troy home. We're told after police stopped him, they searched his car and found 16 brand new iPhones and an iPad in his trunk. Jose Junior Rosario is charged with five counts of larceny from mail as well as driving with a suspended license. Originally from New York, Rosario is being held on a $150,000 bond. Now to Westland, where a man is accused of robbing several stores while wearing different masks. Police say Brendan Bonner robbed a Shell gas station in Garden City while wearing the clown mask that you see on your screen there. Bonner is accused of threatening the cashier with a gun who gave him more than a thousand bucks in cash. Now, just six hours before, police say the same man robbed an Intimate Ideas store in Westland of $422 while wearing a skeleton mask this time. Bonner has been arrested and charged in the robberies. A toddler is in the hospital listed in critical condition right now after being shot in the stomach. Police tell us the mom and dad are telling some conflicting stories. Mom says she was unloading her car when she heard a pop inside the house. The three-year-old was inside that home with a two-month-old and a 15-year-old who was looking after the younger children. Both parents have been detained. As of right now, no charges have been filed. Clock ticks down until Election Day. Kent County's clerk spoke with CNN today on election security, saying she wants to make sure that people are able to have absolute faith in their elections. My message to Michigan voters is that uh, we're going to respect and honor your rights. Your votes are going to be counted. The election is going to be fair and accurate. We're just going to have a good day. Elections are a celebration. Uh, they're a reminder of the blessings of liberty that we have in this country, and uh, and they're what make us the envy of the world. And I want the public to know that. I want them to have faith in the outcome. And here in Michigan, that's exactly what they're going to get. Now, over on ClickOnDetroit.com, you can find everything you need to know about early absentee and election day voting ahead of November 5th. Family finally getting some answers today. After a mystery lasting nearly 30 years, investigators have finally identified the body of a man found near Nevada's Hoover Dam back in 2009. William Hayatumaki was originally from Michigan. His family says they last saw him back in 1995 before he set out to visit his sister in New Mexico. It's unclear what happened. Authorities say Hayatumaki died somewhere between 2006 and 2009, but due to decomposition, just can't be sure. Investigators were able to identify him with DNA. A boy from River Rouge who went missing and was feared to be in danger has been found safe. The 13-year-old had last been seen at McDonald's getting into a vehicle registered to his father, whose parental rights had recently been terminated over a child abuse incident. Well, police over in Kentucky pulled over that vehicle, found the boy inside. They took his dad, Christopher Brown, into custody. The warrant request has been sent to the Wayne County prosecutor. 
Let's take a live look downtown Detroit where we might reach for a heat record for the second day in a row. Bright blue skies. It is gorgeous out there, Kim. It's hard to believe it's October and you're enjoying it as well on the local four plaza. Well, I don't know, enjoying it is the word since I had a blowout this afternoon, but uh, it's windy. That's really the big story. I, I think Detroit is the new Chicago because we have wind gusts downtown here at about 25, even 30 miles per hour. In fact, take a look at some of the wind gusts as of right now, 34 mile per hour gusts out at Metro Airport, 30 in Pontiac, 29 in Mount Clemens. So definitely a windy afternoon and it looks like Halloween will also be very, very windy. We did just officially break the record. The record for today was 76 and just within the last few minutes, Metro Airport reporting 77. So another day, the second day in a row of record breaking temperatures. In fact, Lapeer is close to 80 degrees. There it's 79. Big changes ahead though for Thursday into Friday. We go from 74 degrees to a high Friday of 55, but we're not done with the 70s. We go right back into the 70s next week. So it's not sweater weather. It's scrunchy weather <laughs> for those of us that have long hair. Yeah, uh, but I'll be back in the studio and we'll see how I can pull it together. In a you few always minutes. pull it together. Kim, you look great. Thank you. <laughs> I don't know about that. You That's do. Good. You do. All right. Thank you so much. Well, a historic gem in one of Detroit's historic districts is going to be open for an estate sale this week. So we're bringing in local forest, Ty Steele. He joins us in studio for some more on this story. Now, you we also want to introduce you because in case folks haven't seen, you were on the noon show earlier. Noon show earlier this week. First local fort four with the famous first, Karen oh, Drew. Well, thanks for having famous. me. Well, thanks for being here. Well, it's good to be here. This is a great first story, too. So much history in this mansion all the way back to the early 20th century. This home was once owned by one of the pioneers of Detroit's auto industry. It's changed hands a few times over the years, but the current 93-year-old owner and seller has kept the home and all its unique contents in immaculate condition. Wow. Wow, the ceiling's a work of art. Welcome to the 10,000 square foot Edward F. Fisher Mansion in Detroit's Boston Edison Historic District, commissioned and once lived in by the famous automotive pioneer himself. The Renaissance Revival Mansion at 892 West Boston is filled with antique furniture, custom art, and collectibles from the early automotive era all the way up until the 1980s, and everything must go. It's going to be all offered first come, first serve over the course of a weekend. So everything must sell. Somebody can walk in, see something, and purchase it. Grab the tag and purchase it right there. Aaron Sapersky is handling the estate sale and gave us an exclusive tour. The most expensive item? This custom dining room table by Detroit glass artist Ron Slater, listed for $8,000. Or this original English pub sign from the early 1900s? going for more than 5,000. So in addition to the artwork and the amazing pieces of furniture throughout the home, there's also an incredible vintage clothing collection, huge, so many pieces like this one, this Christian Dior from the 1980s with the original receipt, all the tags still on the jacket. This piece going for about 200 bucks. That's one of the biggest draws actually is the clothing because so many more people are into vintage clothes right now than ever before. Thousands of unique items throughout the house, including a pool table, a vintage Motown record collection, and enough dishware to serve an army takes a team of about 10 four days to get ready. A labor of love for staff with Aaron's estate sales. It's a new adventure every single day. I love digging through houses, finding stuff, using my knowledge of vintage and antique items to help out families who uh, need to get their stuff sold. But it's not just the stuff that has to go. The home is also listed for sale at $2.2 million. With more than 30 rooms boasting stained glass windows, Venetian details, Italian marble fireplaces, and intricate ceiling designs, it's truly a work of art and a piece of Detroit's history. It really is a sight to be seen. The owner did not want to go on camera today, but he did tell me he's selling the house to downsize. He is 93 years old, and unfortunately his wife passed away a few years ago. The home was basically her labor of love, so it's time for him to yeah. find something a little smaller. Well, it makes sense. It's pretty darn huge. Oh, 10,000 square feet for a 93-year-old. He's been taking care of it by himself. An incredible guy. Did you have like a favorite room or a favorite? I saw that yellow couch that was like tufted. That looked kind of fun. That was the spa room oh, that actually see? has a hot tub in it. <gasps> and so that had, the, uh, that had the Motown record collection oh. inside of it. So every room was designed by 30 different designers, so they all had their own theme. Oh, Just that's an incredible. Cool incredible home. The estate sale is from October 31st through November 3rd from 10 to 4 each day. Again, first come, first serve. So if you want any of that stuff or the house, Well, you're moving into there. town. Did you do any shopping? <laughs> well, we already got a house, but and that was a little <laughs> bit out of my price That's, range. It is a little $2. expensive. $2.2 million, but right. a steal of a deal for a home like that. It's pretty cool. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Ty.